All right, so with that, we're going to move on to our next item on the agenda, which is Governor Roundtable. Uh, this is an opportunity for governors to talk about whatever may be on their mind. Um, I will uh, respectfully invite everybody's attention to the time. We've obviously gone over time, uh, but this is some time set aside for governors to talk about what they are thinking about. We'll start with Brent. Thank you, Mr. President. So the though we have just tackled one really huge uh, thing, there is something I want to bring starting here, which is another huge, huge thing that before the work actually goes into the proposals, it was suggested that we bring it here to kind of just get some maybe thumbs up emojis if you like it. The idea is that which we have heard from sections since I've been on the board, and that is about the um, incongruity of the fiscal year and our license year mixed with the calendar year. And for the last three and a half years, um, it's been something that I've been raising, just wanting to have a conversation about. And finally, after being appointed to the budget and audit committee, because everyone said, well, you got to start, you know, start with the budget and audit committee. And, and we hadn't had this brought up until this year. And now here we are at the budget and audit committee and, and there was some initial work done, uh, just a very top level conversation amongst uh, Director Nevitt and senior staff about the fact that to, yes, there is no prohibition for us to align everything into one. However, that is the most base superficial Twitter type headline meant to grab clicks because it would be a major undertaking. It's not a simple resolution of, yes, let's just align the calendar year and the license year. No, no, no. It would be bylaw revisions. It would take uh, adjusting of a multitude of things, including even the cycle of when terms begin for those elected to serve. And so, um, before going into the full-on analysis of, of what would go in, again, this would take a lot of time from Diana Singleton and her team and Julie and her team, as well as Director, I mean, everyone would be putting in a lot of work to talk about what exactly needs to happen in order to get that end result, which we have been, I have been specifically asked about, and we've had people bring it to the board in years past, asking about why can't we do this? It's such a pain in the backside. So before I push forward, I wanted to see if there was any other interest amongst the sitting governors to ask for that information um, for us to move forward to see exactly what would be needed to make that happen. Because again, I, you know, when I joined the board, I was immediately impressed with the involvement of our section leaders and the section members who aren't even just on their ECs. And it's just something that, you know, as I did my liaisoning over the years and would go to the meetings, um, this was just a constant drumbeat. And people would ask me, you know, why, 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 you know, and, and the answer is, because it has been that way. And who knows if it started originally because the Supreme Court of the United States starts theirs on the first Monday of October. And, you know, we don't know the original genesis as to why we went with that date, but it's a bigger issue than simply just saying, poof, we are lining up everything in one year. So is, you know, I wanted to just, again, I wanted to bring it to us in round table format just to kind of look at all your faces and squares and see if people shared that uh, interest to learn more and and um, and bring this up for further conversation, debate, and discussion. All right, thank you very much, uh, Brent. I see Sunitha with her hand up. Sunitha, thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thank you, um, Brent. I. I think this is an issue that we should be examining and that we should take up. Can I ask you one question, however, in order to do this, does this involve a bylaw change or a policy change? What, what exactly are we looking at? 
Yes, to answer your question, it's yes to that. And it would even involve us likely asking the Supreme Court to make a change to the State Bar Act because so here's just one of the one of the rabbit holes. It's just just one of them is that you may know if if you pay your own uh, bar dues that there is a payment plan that you can start once the licensing window opens on November first or whatever whatever day the, the window starts. Um, you can do a payment plan, but that payment plan is done by February 1st. I'm looking at Director Lynch. To, yeah, okay. So it has to be done by February 1st because that's what the statute says. And um, but, and and so if we were to move things two, four months forward, that would either A, shorten our window for taking payments, or we would need to ask the court for them to issue a rule saying that final payment, and again, pardon me, I'm not trying to quote statute, but final payment is done by April 1st. And and so there there it is, it would be a big hairy monster of a machine of time to make that adjustment and, and reallocation. Um and it would be bylaws, policies, the courts, at, you know, it would require everyone to be on board before the first pin gets pulled and the then the wheels go down the hill. But that's why, again, I before I wanted to ask any staff work. I wanted to see if there were other members of the board who wanted to know these gritty nitty details uh, because it it is it is a lot. I'm not going to try and hide it at all. It is a huge undertaking that there's nothing prohibiting it other than it's just would be a lot of time, energy and work of the board, the staff and the court. And a follow up question um, in terms of what the sections I'm interested to hear um, this sounds as though this arose for you after you received feedback from sections. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely. So it, the first year that I, I went and didn't really even know, you know, as a first year governor being a liaison, you show up and you go and then you ask question like, I, I don't know. Um, but it usually stemmed with because the fact that everything that we do, they have to do on a forward a couple months ahead of us because it has to then get rolled up to us. So they're doing a lot of their work that has to be completed um, in the springtime and early summer, where again, getting member involvement for them, where it just, because even section membership begins on October 1. So the fact that their, their section dues are from October 1 to September 30th, as where your dues with the Washington State Bar Association are January 1 to December 31. And so the the fact that it was just, um, and and again, I've, I've just now joined my first section EC with the RPPT. Um, so I haven't personally felt it, but I've heard it every year, the groan and the moan when, when the staff are talking about, okay, it's now time for you to be getting your budget in. And it's, and it just was, something where every year it was, God, why can't we just be aligned and have everything be done in the same calendar, you know, as, as our bar dues year being January to December. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much, Brent. And thank you, Sunitha. So um, I'm going to go in the order in which I saw hands. Now I, I saw Francis with his hand raised. It appears to now be lowered. Francis, did you still have a question or a comment? He was lowered. I just wanted um, to give to ask if um, Director Lynch, because this is this has to do with um, the treasurer, finance position, treasury, and all of that. I wanted us to give an opportunity to Director Lynch in case she has one or two comments with regards to what would what will be the impact of this and what will be the advantage, pros and cons, both sides. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Francis. So what, what I'm going to do, I am going to go to um, Director Lynch just momentarily, but first I saw Kevin's hand up. So we're going to go Kevin, and then I'm going to go over to you, Director Lynch. Kevin. Well, I'm sure Director Lynch will put this better than I will, but um, in order for her to roll up the budget, you got to get all the budgets from the sections first, so you have numbers to crunch. Um, and there are a variety of cascading things like that. Um, 
but I'll start off, well, I'll start by saying uh, me too to Brent, because I've been on an EC for, for many years, and I've been a liaison for a number of ECs since I've been on the board, and people are like, well, I, and they do grouch about it. Now, I would be interested in knowing what we would have to do, not necessarily map out doing it, but if we were to put in the bar news an explanation of, you know, this is why we can't do that because it would cost us all this stuff and it's actually less of a hassle to have you uh, vote on this thing two months ahead than have to re-gig, you know, the entire way that our financials work and, and whatever else she will describe because I can appreciate that we don't even know how how ugly doing that would re, how ugly it would be to have to implement that. And maybe if you tell us, the grouching might go away. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. We'll go over to Director Lynch if she chooses to weigh in. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to note one thing that the section membership year and the license year are actually the same. So it's a, a January to December. So it used to be that they were different and that caused a lot of problems. And years ago, we we made that shift and and transferred to, to making sure that they were the same. So it was a step towards consistency, right? So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I I think when this topic was brought up as, as really focusing on the fiscal year, uh, most of the conversation we had internally was that it, it wasn't so much about the fiscal year as it is about the board year too, right? The the approval of a budget uh, that if you were to keep the board year the same October to December, but change your fiscal year, you then have two different boards looking at a budget, different groups, you know, a, a new board, per, uh, so to speak, that is approving a budget. Uh, that was presented to a prior board. So that was just one of the main concerns that we had is if you're going to do this, it, it does need to be wholesale and needs to be something that is well thought out. From an accounting perspective, it is simpler, right? Right now we do a lot of work to accrue things and make the, the license fees match the fiscal year because it does not match now. Um, but the reality is it's, it, it is, you know, just a, a matter of making that switch. But there's just so many more effects that that, ha that happen here as a result of making that change. So I, I don't think I would say that this is not possible. Like we, we're not saying this is impossible. There's nothing significantly uh, problematic in, in my perspective of making this change. It's just the matter of planning it out and actually creating all of these changes to be consistent and make sure that we're giving our members the same um, experience, right? We talked about the, uh, uh, Governor Williams, Ruth, you mentioned the payment plan, right? Giving our members three months to pay the, the fee by the deadline is still something we think is important and consistent and wouldn't want to shorten that timeline, right? So making all the changes to ensure that that experience is still the same is, is important to us. Great. Thank you very much, Director Lynch. Then we will go to Brent. And I just want to clarify, sorry, I, I am a little sleepy um, as I just flew in last night and there was a delay due to weather and I didn't get in until one. But yes, I didn't mean to mean I didn't mean the membership year. It was about the fiscal because, again, with sections where you have them rolling into the, the budget year, it just it it's so I apologize that I, I missed a, misspoke as to about the member. But it's 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 just that it's it's that conversation of um it is possible. I mean, and that and that's why, you know, for, for three and a half years, I've been asking, let's have this conversation and find out because it yes, it will be I, and I'm going to just keep saying it, it's going to cost money, it's going to cost staff time, it would be a big hairy undertaking where multiple parts have to move. But I wanted to have this conversation in a formal setting. But only if other people cared enough to to bring to ask for that work because it would be an expenditure of our time and effort this is a process that would take multiple years it would likely be done well if if approved well after the time i'm off the board but it's setting that ball in motion to see if we want to do it because again it is that request that we hear from i mean and and i say this with all due respect President Abel sent out an email about the last topic, asking for everyone to read and get into it, but it was sent be right before the holiday season got into full swing. And I got the sense that not a lot of people took up that call of action. Now, imagine if you are someone who has a practice that works around 
a school calendar and you're gone for the summer and how many sections are having to scramble right when they get back in because they haven't done things. It, it's, I mean, if, if we couldn't do it when it comes to the bar licensure task force, why do we keep asking our section leaders that are exponentially more than the number of us to have to keep doing it and having this, this pain point every year without, I mean, again, if we go through it and I'm going to make up a horrible fake, fake, fake number, if it costs $15 million, which it won't, but if it did, I would be able to go back to sections every year when they go to their liaison and say, God, why don't we have this? Because it would cost us $15 million and that, and the board of governors in 2024 felt that that wasn't a good use of, of member money just because the fact that people didn't want to have to work through their summer break. It's the fact that I don't have an answer to the question. And that's all that I'm asking for to see if other people will join me in going through the official process of learning what would be required and, and then making an informed choice. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Brent. Uh, I will, um, Respect to invite the members attention to, to the time. We're about 47 minutes uh, over. But that being said, this is time set aside for Governor Roundtable. Any other governors who have anything on their minds that they want to share with the group? No. Uh, I just have one small thing. And I agree. I actually, I will support Governor William Groot's uh, proposal to start in the future. Oh, Nam, you went on mute. We lost you. And I would like to point out, like yesterday, at yesterday meeting, there were two different organizations that had planned or tentative plan to ask the legislature for funding for various things, the ATJ board and the, the courts. And I think as an organization, we can help those organizations to put together a comprehensive ask because I think the court system and the justice system in the state is well underfunded. And our organization is uniquely placed to put together a proposal to the legislature for additional funding instead of separate organization asking. And I, I would like permission or ask to reach out to some organization to see if they have other further funding proposal for the legislature in upcoming biennium. Thank you. Understood. Thank you very much, Nam. I had intended to read one of the comments in the chat in our last subject of discussion. This is from Kari. She writes that nearly every section I've been a part of on the EC and or been a liaison to in my role on the BOG has had the same complaint or request. Again, talking about the FY versus CY distinction. Any other comments from governors on uh, for purposes of Governor Roundtable? Looking over the various screens, uh, if anybody's got anything, go ahead and raise your hand electronically or wave your physical hand and I'll call on you. If not, in a couple of seconds, we will move on to meeting feedback.